Climate change has taken its toll on the natural world, and Australia's Great Barrier Reef is no exception. But scientists are trying to intervene, hoping to preserve this amazing natural wonder for generations to come. Our Brett Clinic traveled there as part of ABC's Climate Crisis series, Saving Tomorrow. It might look like paradise from above, but beneath the turquoise waves of the Coral Sea, picturesque views turn to the barren expanse of a struggling ecosystem. This is the reality of one of our world's greatest treasures, the Great Barrier Reef. This sprawling natural habitat is teeming with marine life, but it's the maze of coral, the heartbeat of the Great Barrier Reef, that sustains the life here. And that's why it's so important to win this fight to save the reef. And that heartbeat continues to be under attack from climate change. Back-to-back -back coral bleaching events in 2016 and 2017, and most recently in 2020, have left their mark on parts of the reef where coral was too hot for too long and withered away. That's the research boat over there we're about to link up. Hello, how are you? Thanks for having us on board today. We meet marine ecologist Dr Peter Harrison and his squad of graduate students near Black Island Reef off the Australian coast, an area severely impacted by coral bleaching in recent years. We've lost so many adult breeding corals that the production of larvae is now compromised. So that's how and why we're intervening. The Great Barrier Reef stretches over 133,000 square miles, is visible from space and helps fuel area fisheries and tourism. Its importance is not in dispute, but for some in Australia, climate change is, despite the eroding state of the nation's prized ecosystem. Peter's team is hard at work trying to preserve a small coral community through their lava cultivation operation. Tell me about this project. What are we getting done today? So today is the culmination of a year of planning and using new styles of delivery of the coral larvae onto damaged sections of the reef. We collect some of the immense coral spawn that occurs at the sea surface and then we carefully transfer the eggs and sperm and the embryos that are developing into these floating larval culture pools that are anchored on the reef. Those larvae are now ready to settle. The team of scientists have tens of millions of microscopic coral growing in these pools. They're trying to emulate the natural brown clouds of coral spawn, typical on the reef during this time of year. The spring-like weather conditions are ideal for breeding. That will change once the summer heat rolls through in the coming weeks. What we're going to do is pull the pools over to the back end of the boat here, raise them up and concentrate the larvae, get an estimate of how many million larvae there are. And we take the samples so that we can then calculate how many larvae are in the whole pool. So what part of the process this are is, those larvae? So these larvae are now six days old, those ones. And those larvae are at a point now where um, they will want to settle. So that's why we're going to put them back on the reef now. A successful outcome from today will be a result of many more larvae settling on the reef and growing into new corals than is occurring naturally. Peter says his team's replanting efforts elsewhere on the reef have ushered in reclaimed ecosystems, demonstrating the resiliency of coral-dependent biospheres under stable ocean temperatures. We've been able to re-establish breeding coral populations within just two to three years. And those coral communities are now dominating what were really highly degraded reef systems. So we're very excited by those results. But Peter's small operation is only part of the solution to revitalise the countless reefs that are struggling in Australia's coast. In 2016, we saw a 30% drop in coral cover across the whole Great Barrier Reef. They didn't slowly die of starvation. Two weeks, that's all it took. They, they cooked. And the temperatures that year were about three degrees centigrade and above the normal summer maximum. Dr Terry Hughes directs the Centre for Coral Reef Studies at James Cook University in Australia. He's been sounding the alarm on the devastating effects climate change is having on the Great Barrier Reef for years. We used to worry about the impacts of cyclones because they're quite destructive on corals. Now we wish for a cyclone during very hot summers because bleaching has become so commonplace that we now have weather forecasts that predict bleaching in the coming weeks. 
Hughes says public visibility of the reef's overall health is key, particularly from those whose livelihoods depend on it. The Great Barrier Reef today, after five bleaching events, is a checkerboard of reefs that are in good condition and not so good condition. The tour operators know the good spots and they're quite selective in where they take people right. to ensure that they have a good experience. In 2019, Cairns-based Passions of Paradise began planting coral on damaged parts of Hastings Reef, in addition to running their tour operations for vacationers. So there are some reefs we go to that are 11 out of 10, would absolutely blow your mind. Without a sustainable approach to our operation, we don't have anything to show people. Every bit helps, but it's still not enough, as global greenhouse emissions continue to climb. In the coming years, the new challenge for researchers will be finding ecologically and socially responsible ways to breed heat-tolerant coral that's also cost-effective. We're not looking at seeding a, a few hundred or a few thousands onto the reef. It's likely that hundreds of thousands or even millions of corals will be required. But there's a lot of knowledge that we have to gain before we get to that point. Yeah. Back out on the water, Peter and his team are using the knowledge scientists already have on the inner workings of these organisms. In just one day, they successfully released more than three million coral larvae, hoping each spawn finds a place to settle and thrive on the recovering reef. But it's a drop in the bucket, and Peter knows much more needs to be done to ensure the entire Great Barrier Reef can thrive once again in the decades to come. We need real and effective action internationally and in Australia on climate change and greenhouse gas emissions. Otherwise, the future of the reefs looks very bleak. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.